No. Um, and I don't think there are barriers to entry in a truly free market. So uh, take the worst case, so-called worst case in quotes, of a monopolist in, in, in US history, before antitrust laws. And that was in the 1870s, uh, Rockefeller Standard Oil. Uh, at some point, I think they had 92% of all the oil refining capacity in the US. And standard economic theory would suggest that uh, once they reach that, basically it's a monopoly, what would happen to prices? Who's taking Econ 101? They would go up. What would happen to quality? It would go down. Well, it turns out, if you actually go in the records and look, the exact opposite happened. Prices went down, quality went up. And you go, what, Rockefeller's an idiot? Why did he do this? And it turns out that Rockefeller understood that there are no barriers to entry in a true free market. That capital is always seeking a return. And if he drove prices up and quality went down, one, he would, competitors would arise. Two, there would be fewer uses for the product he was producing. He was, he was, he was refining oil. And the cheaper he made the pro refining process, the cheaper he made the product, the more uses there would be. Now guess who competed Rockefeller out of his initial business? What was the initial business that you used oil for? What did we use oil for originally? Light. And uh, do you know who, uh, I, I don't know if you guys know, but Rockefeller saved the whales. Because before Rockefeller, what was used for light? Whale oil. The whaling industry basically was decimated by kerosene. Now who competed Rockefeller out of the lighting business? Edison. Now I want to find the bureaucrat who could have predicted that one. That's called substitution. It's a product that you couldn't, they're not on the same, like this is oil, this is black mucky stuff, and this is, ele this is electrons moving, and yet one substituted for the other. Substitution, you know, now, it turned out that by that point, he'd made oil so cheap that he didn't really care losing the kerosene business, because what did he move into? The gasoline business. And there was a real competition of what would move cars. And gasoline won out because he had, by that point, made refining so efficient and cheap that you know, it was the obvious choice for, the, for, for, for an engine for an automobile, and he made his money that way. And by the way, by the time the antitrust people got around to breaking up standard oil, what percentage of the, of the industry did he own by that point? 20-something percent. So competition had already driven him down from 90 to 20 percent, and now they broke him up. So no, if you look at the history, you look at Alcoa Aluminum, you look at IBM, you look at all the big antitrust cases, and what you find is prices were going down, quality was going up, Bef you know, without the government going after these people, uh, it made no sense. And, you know, and, and the fact is that people have, I mean, I believe people have a right to collude. It's not the rights of consumers, it's property rights. If you want to get together with other business people and collude, you have a right to do it. It's not good economics. Almost always somebody cheats, something breaks up the, 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 the little scheme that you are doing. But you have every right to do it. You as a consumer do not have a right to get a product at whatever price you want. 